Hi everybody, welcome back. Glad you could tune in again. So we want to think about how we should live as Christians in such a way that we're able by the grace of God through the power of the Spirit of Christ to have an impact on the world around us. So what better place to turn than the book of Nehemiah? I was looking at this book a few months ago for some teaching I was doing and a year or two before that. So it's a fantastic book and of course you know the story of the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the man of action, wasn't he? He was the man who grabbed the world by the scruff of the neck, who galvanized all those tired and exhausted and demoralized Israelites to rebuild the walls and the gates of the city of Jerusalem. He was the man who fought off with shrewdness and with great courage all the opposition that was around him. Those are the things that we know Nehemiah for and we completely ignore what the text actually says in chapter 1. In particular, look at the dates with me. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month of Hislev in the 20th year that I was in Susa, the capital. That's the place in Persia where uh, Nehemiah heard the news that the uh, walls of Jerusalem had broken down and its gates had been burned by fire. And then we discover in verse 4 that as soon as he heard these words, he sat down and wept and mourned for days and continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And then we read about all the stuff in his prayer in chapter 1. Then he gets to chapter 2. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him and then Nehemiah springs into action. And it's really exciting, isn't it? And we completely ignore the dates. Look closely with me and we'll see what Nehemiah is besides being a man of action. Get your Bibles, stop the video, go find a Bible. No, that's a phone. Get a Bible, one of these things, and open it up at the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 1, verse 1. The 20th year in the month of Chislev is December 446 B.C. They didn't call it 446 BC back then, but it's the 20th year of the king and it's the it's December of the year 446 BC. Now, the next chapter, when he goes into King Artaxerxes in chapter one, it's the month of Nisan in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes. That is March or April of the year we now know as 445 BC. So for three or three and a half months... Nehemiah prayed. Man of action indeed. And that brings us to the subject I'd like to talk with you about today as we consider how, excuse me, we ought to take on this challenge before us of standing against the false gospels of the world around us and seeking to contend for Christ in the world, in his name. If we're not in prayer, then we're not like Nehemiah. We might think of ourselves as men and women of action, but we are not connected by grace to the God of action if we're not in prayer to that living God. And Pastor Neil and I were talking about this subject just a few minutes ago today. I was uh, zooming him in my study right here and we were talking about this issue of daily prayer and of family devotions in particular family worship or family prayer. I don't know what you call it, but you know what I mean. Um, maybe it's just one of you, you're listening to this or watching this on your own. In that case, I'm talking about your daily Bible reading and prayer. But if you're a family, I'm talking about um, this big question. Do you get together as a family every day for a few minutes to, well, what do you get together to do? And Pastor Neil pointed out very, very shrewdly a couple of problems that we immediately run into as soon as we start thinking about this subject. The first problem is the problem of comparison. So and so does it like this. And it, that must be therefore the only way. If we're not doing it like that, we're doing it wrong. And so the guilt mounds up a little bit more. And then what happens is we observe, and here's the second uh, observation, which is worth bearing in mind. There is actually no specific biblical requirement to have a time of daily family worship or daily family prayer. And therefore, there are no direct biblical instructions about precisely what we ought to do. So we flit back and forth 
between um, the legalist in us that looks at the so-and-so family and thinks, well, that's what they do, we ought to do that, and we find that unattainable for some reason, and then we flit from the legalist to the antinomian in us that sulkily insists, well, there's nothing in the Bible about this kind of thing at all, maybe this doesn't really matter. And so half the time we're guilty, half the time we're prayerless, and all the time we're completely ineffective in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be much better for all of us, and particularly for fathers, to think to themselves, hold on a second, I'm responsible to raise my children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I'm responsible to love my wife as Christ loved the church. Didn't Christ teach the church to pray? Shouldn't fathers teach their children to pray? Shouldn't we all be praying together? Wouldn't it be a better thing to be spending, and here's the key thing, wouldn't it be a better thing to be spending 10 minutes a day doing something rather than those 10 minutes a day doing nothing? So what I want to urge you to do is, today, if you're doing nothing, please have a go at doing something. Honestly, it doesn't matter what. I'm almost reluctant to go any further. I had a list of suggestions here, uh, and I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't even mention them. Uh, but if I don't mention them, then this will be an unusually short devotion, and you'll all be thinking, oh, what happened? Nothing happened. I'm going to tell you briefly, but these are not the four you must choose between. These are just four options that you, you have. If, if you can't think of anything else, please pick one of these. Give it a go. Find a time during the day. Let me go through some options. Here's the first option. You could do what I do. Perish the thought. I've got a bunch of things that I've scrabbled together over the years, which uh, we use as a family here. I've got a slightly longer version, which is a couple of Bible readings, a bunch of prayers. We say a psalm. Nicole reads a proverb or two. The whole thing takes us 10 minutes or maybe it's 12 minutes or 13 minutes if you include, because we all go around as a family and pray for something in particular. You get the whole thing done easily in 15 minutes. No problem at all. It's a wonderful, enriching time of worship and prayer together. Second option, I've got a shorter version of that, which takes six minutes. Come on, who's not got six minutes in the day? Third option, this man, J.C. Ryle. Get a copy of his Expository Thoughts on the Gospels. This is volume two of his Expository Thoughts on the Gospel of John and just open it at the whatever page you closed it at yesterday and read four or five paragraphs. This is the tremendously learned and erudite top scholar of his day who became Bishop of Liverpool and res resolved in his words to crucify his style so as to make his highfalutin and erudite sermons accessible to the ordinary men and women of his city of Liverpool. He refused to have a new cathedral built because he wanted to divert the funds to doing good for the poor and reaching out to the lost. Not that it's a bad idea to have a cathedral but hey if there are people dying in the streets it might be a good idea to sort that out first. This is a tremendous uh, and insightful and thought-provoking bunch of expository reflections. Just pick it up, read it. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to do that. Dead easy. Um, daily Dose of Charles Spurgeon. Here's another option. Uh, if you insist, you can even find it online. Just Google Daily Dose of Spurgeon and you'll find a website which gives you a page to read, take you four or five minutes. Read that, pray together, amen, done. Or you could get yourself a book version. If you Google Daily Dose of Spurgeon, you'll find gazillions of different uh, nice hardback bound versions or cheap and cheerful paperbacks, which are much easier and cheaper to get hold of. Uh, finally, here's another thing. I just literally, I was about to start this Devo, and then I saw this. It's Westminster Shorter Catechism. My goodness, why didn't I think of that? Just go through that every day. Just read, what's the next one? What is the second commandment? The second commandment is, read it, and then, well, obviously, there's the scripture proof is the second commandment for that one, but sometimes you get a version which has got additional scripture proofs. You could read them. You could then pray for a minute or two about whatever it is in there. It really doesn't matter if you're doing something sorry if you're doing nothing it really doesn't matter what you do please though please have a go at something be like Nehemiah the man of action who changed the world by spending three months on his knees in prayer pouring his heart out to the living God and then let's see as a church together shall we what the living God does through us the Lord bless you hope you're all doing well and I look forward, God willing, to see you soon. Bye for now.